I love having clear space inside of myself with absolutely nothing on my mind, which gives me the freedom to be as much me as I can be wherever I show up and whatever I'm doing. And I discovered, though, that most people also have something that is hanging them up, something that they should be thinking about, something that's pulling on their attention, something that's draining their energy. Usually it's some project, some problem, some situation coming at them. And they're just resisting hopping into it and thinking about it appropriately to be able to be appropriately managing it. So I'm going to take, invite you to take a little short test drive with me on something very real in your world right now, something that you have attention on. Uh, and <clears throat> if you think about on your radar, what's coming toward you? A project, an event, something you need to deal with, uh, a speech you need to give, somebody you need to hire, a party you need to give, something you need to celebrate, something you need to organize or think about. Do you have something you, that some part of you is thinking you ought to be thinking about a little bit more? And close your eyes just for a second and let emerge whatever most has your attention of that nature. And then in your notes, would you just write that down? Pick a topic, an event, or a project, a real thing right now that perhaps is most on your mind, has, most has your attention. Years ago, I was quite curious about what's the best way to plan. I didn't seem to see any particular planning model that worked for everything universally and was foolproof. So I went in search of who knows how to do this. I went in search of the master planner, and I found him, or her. You all know it very well. It's your brain. Now, there's some things your brain does not do very well. It uh, forgets where it laid, out, laid your keys down, and it doesn't handle trying to track more than four things at once. But there's some things your brain does brilliantly, automatically, can't help it, and one of them is plan. You're a planning machine. You're planning all the time. You can't help plan. You planned what to wear here today. You planned how to get here. You planned where to sit. You planned lunch. You planned what to talk to people about on the break. You can't help it. You are a natural planner. It's going on all the time, probably because of evolutionary, you know, over millennia, the brain figured out that that was something that got it to survive. Survival of the species. Gee, how do I get away from the bear coming at me? How do I get fruit out of the tree? Or how do I create a relationship with that attractive person? Survival of the species. So you're doing it all the time, and it's you know, grown over millennia to actually do this naturally. And even for you personally, you've been planning since you were six months old. Because at six months is when the executive function wakes up in your forebrain, and that's when you decide to throw a tantrum to get something you don't have yet. <laughs> and you've been planning since then. You're really good at this. So I asked myself, now wait a minute, what is this natural planning model that we're all using all the time? And I came up with some interesting stuff. And I discovered that this natural planning model is actually a recognizable five-phase mo model, organically, that we use to take anything from impulse into reality. Let's take a couple of simple examples to walk you through that. And also, what you picked as a topic. We'll also let you apply it to that and we'll see what happens. Uh, let's suppose that uh, this is 30,000 years ago and you encounter this guy. Or it's tonight, and you're thinking about dinner, going out. Now, what would cause you to think about anything about those situations, right? Well, obviously, bear shows up. First thing on my mind is uh, survive, live, no pain, all body parts intact. Dinner tonight, why would you think about dinner tonight? Well, the, the nothing in the kitchen, and I'm hungry. Or I want to sign a business deal with a prospective client. Or romance with somebody. But what starts natural planning to begin with is a real purpose, some real intention, something that you need to have occur or happen. What I'd like you to do right now is take a moment and think about whatever it is you picked as a topic or project and answer this question just very briefly for yourself in a phrase or a sentence. What is the main reason this thing exists? Or what is the primary purpose for this event?
Just jot down. Think for a moment what that is and jot that down. What happens next? Well, next what happens is not some detailed plan about your thing. Next what happens is you play writer, producer, director, and in your mind you go out to the end and you produce a vision of success. What is my final ideal scenario and outcome going to be on this? In terms of the bear, oh, I want to be back in my own warm cave with my mate, safe and warm. In terms of dinner, hey, be a fun evening, good food and wine, maybe a signed business deal, maybe romance in multiple forms. You create a vision first. So would you take the next few moments and ask yourself, okay, what would success mean to me for what I picked here? How would you describe, and you, you can you know, develop this out later, so grab some key words or just thoughts. Just quickly now, jot down what would mean success for you with this event or this thing you picked. Go. What do you do next? Well, what happens next, assuming you want this vision to actually occur, is you're going to have to deal with an image of reality that does not match by your current reality. That creates tension in your brain. So if you've imagined a reality that's not true yet, some part of you goes, ah, there's a delta, there's a gap between where I am and what I want. So what your brain does then is try to relieve that pressure, and it does it by generating all kinds of ideas, potentially useful ideas or potentially relevant ideas about how to get from here to there. It does it in somewhat random order, by the way. No particular logical sequence or weight, they just start to show up. What might be relevant about this situation? In terms of the bear, Ooh, how big's the bear? How big am I? Uh, how sharp is my spear? Is there a tree I could run up? Is it, is it angry or is it hungry? So what starts here, by the way, is a storm that happens in your brain by holding this picture. It's called brainstorm. Exactly. So what I'd like you to do now is take the next few moments and come up with as many things as you can possibly come up with in just a few moments here. Little things, big things, doesn't matter. Jot down anything that pops to your head. So draw a line and just make a huge list or a mind map or whatever you'd like to do. Real quick, anything that might be potentially relevant about your project or topic. actually occur, some part of you is going to take those somewhat random ideas and start to create a structure. You're going to... Start to organize them. And this is where you're going to bring your critical, logical, rational thinking to bear. Now you're going to evaluate big versus little, best, what's the best idea, what's the first thing I need to do, what's the most important thing. So usually you will start to structure your, your data based upon sequences of things or critical components or priorities. You know, if, if it's the bear, I go, well, okay, first of all, I'm going to, I need to see how the bear feels, I need to see how far that tree is out there, and then I'm going to slowly move that way. In terms of dinner, well, let's see, I need to find out if people want to go, I need to call my favorite restaurant, we need to see if they can take us, et cetera. And so that's the kind of structuring we do now, we're going to start to lay that out. What I'd like you to do is take the next few moments and just pick the three most important things you think you need to handle or deal with in terms of whatever you've picked here. Two or three, and if you've already written them down, circle them or number them. Now, what do you naturally do? And this may be the most important piece of the natural planning model. Now what you do, assuming you want to have something happen, is you're going to take all that thinking and drill it right down into what's the very next thing that needs to happen to move this thing forward? What is the very next action that needs to happen on this? So in terms of the bear, I'm going to go, okay, I'm going to sit still for 10 seconds and eye the tree over there. In terms of the restaurant, I'm going to call Le Bistro and see if they can take two of us at 1900. For your thing, if you were going to walk out right after this, and the only thing you were going to do is make progress on what you're thinking about and working on right now, what's the very next physical, visible action you would take? Is it an email to send, phone call to make, a conversation to have with your boss, something to surf the web about, something to buy at the hardware store? What is it? And it needs to be very specific, visual thing I could see you doing. So set meeting is not specific enough. How would you set the meeting? What activity? So take a couple of moments, decide what the very next action is you would need to take to make forward progress on your thing, and write that down.
So, how many of you actually came up with a reasonably trustworthy next action? I'm curious. Oh, okay, cool. How many of you at least found this a constructive two minutes of thinking? You feel a little more on top of your game, a little clearer about what your stuff is. Any of you? Okay, well, welcome to the natural planning model. Now, I'm sure the burning question for many of you is, David, so what? Here's the so what. That's the natural model. Is this the normal model? Is this how your wedding reception was planned? Is this how your offsite was managed? Is this how you launched your product? Is this how your PR campaign was set up? What I've discovered is the natural model is not necessarily the normal one. What's more normal that I've seen is something that I refer to as the unnatural planning model. What's that? You ever had a boss or a manager or a director bring together the team because they're going to try to be collaborative? They bring you all in a room because we're now going to think together about a problem or a project. And they approach this by saying, OK, who's got a good idea here? Now, where does that automatically you assume that you are in the natural planning model? Because to know a good idea, that's your critical, rational, logical thinking about what's good, better, best. Where's that? Stage four. <laughs> Stage four. In order to make sure you have the right idea or a good idea, you need to make sure purpose has been defined, that the, the vision is clear, that you've generated all the potential the potentially relevant data that might need to be taken into consideration before you can hope to know what's a good or best idea. Guess what, folks? We now have the genetically modified planning model. <laughs> unnatural. And if you try to start that way, that's so unnatural, people naturally resist. And they don't play. Oftentimes it's passive resistance, they just, on a team, or even for their own selves, they do that. Yeah. Then what happens is people don't really plan, and if you don't really plan, what happens? Ah, oh, trouble. It falleth on thy head. Did you get that? I didn't get that. I thought that, and the conflict and the lack of clarity, last minute crises, pressure, stress, no fun, right? But then people in all integrity say, okay, well, I guess we have to handle the situation, and they move into what I've discovered is the reactive planning model. What's that? First approach, <gasps> let's get busy, work harder, four people over time. Then you get busy, burned out, stressed out people at this thing called, hey, that is not handling it. We need to get organized or reorganized, okay? And then you have spreadsheets and, uh, you know, an analytical reports sprouting spontaneously out of closed offices. Somebody at some point realizes that a well-analyzed problem doesn't handle the problem. They say, well, I guess we need some more creative input. Let's bring everybody together. Let's have a brainstorming. Who's got a good idea? Right, that doesn't work. They say, well, we must have used up all of our internal creativity. Dried it up on the last reorg. Well, guess we have to get it from the outside. Time to hire a consultant, that's right. And if they're you know, worth their salt, at some point they're gonna look around and say, well, excuse me, what are you folks trying to do here? People go, God, no wonder we pay this consultant so much money to straighten us out. So folks, it's not a matter of whether you do the natural model, but when and at what cost.